Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about disassembly animation in Katia. As you know, the major command that we have in the assembly uh, design workbench in Katia is this command here, exploded view. And the major problem that exists with this command is it does not really give you much of a control over how you are disassembling it and it does not allow you to create an animation out of the um, disassembly right while you have this uh, all of these uh, features in solidworks uh, assembly so the question is if you want to show somebody with an animation that how you disassemble my assembly how would you do it? So again, as I told you, if you click on exploded view, then uh, it uh, basically shows you the type. Is it 3D? Is it 2D? Is it with constraints, right? All level, first level, but really, you click here, right, and select your uh, fixed components, say apply. What it really does, as you can see, it does not allow you to select each and every one of the components individually, move them as much as you want, as fast as you want. And uh, all it does, as you can see, is this radial explosion, the amount of displacement, the order, the sequence, the speed of the disassembly, everything is kind of determined by um, Katia right so it is not really a an amazing way to disassemble and uh, also there is no option for creating an animation out of it and the reason for this is katia uh, this assembly and animation is a little bit more complicated not everything is in the same workbench in katia you typically need to know how to navigate around so the solution to this is First you go and, uh, by the way, this is a four bar uh, linkage called crank and rocker, right? So the yellow member does full rotation and the blue member only uh, just oscillates. So if I want to create a disassembly sequence and then an animation later, I go to digital mockup, start digital mockup and then go to DMU fitting. Here is the major toolbar in DMU fitting and the first thing you need to do for the components you want to disassemble is you create what we call a shuttle which you see the symbol of it is identical to the manipulation in assembly. You cre uh, create a shuttle or a movement basically and, and movement handle for that object basically. So here for the object to select, let's say all I want to do at the moment is just to take these two pins out that are connecting the conrod to input and output members and then take the conrod out. That's all I want to do for this assembly. So for the selection, I choose the, the pins that are connected to the uh, uh, conrod. So one of them is pin two. You see the compass is now attached to it. And I say, this is one of the objects. So you see, that's the symbol of a shuttle, which is like the compass and a hand. So now that object I'm going to move. Later, I create a similar thing here for pin number three. And then one more finally for the uh, camera. Good. So these three objects are the ones I'm going to move in this assembly. And you see now under application, I have all of these three shuttles generated. I can double click on them, delete them, modify them, whatever I want. Now I click on the track. Now I want to tell exactly these shuttles how to move. I want to tell them how to move each one of these objects, how fast, in which direction. So I click on the track. And now it says, okay, you want to attach it to what? I click here and say, I want to attach it to this shuttle. So it's fine. How do you want it to move from point to point? In a linear manner, in a composite, S-poline, S-poline, or what? Let's say just linear to make it simple. Do you want to specify the speed of the motion or the total time of the motion? Let's say total time. Two seconds is what I want this disassembly to be done. 
is fine. Now, how do you want to do it? Here you click on record and then you record the motion that you want this shuttle to do. So you say record, then grab this and move it along the X axis, like kick the pin out, like that. And then say record again. And now it is going to do this amount of displacement in that direction in two seconds. And you can see that using this player. Look, if you go back and click on this, it is going to do this motion in what? In two seconds, right? So this is what I have, and I OK that. And now it is going to do that motion for me, and you can see it is added already under track. I repeat the process for the two other objects. So I go here. I select this one. Again, a total time of motion. And then I record, I move it out, and I uh, record it again. I click on the record to stop. And again, here you can see the motion. So that's this one. And finally, the Conrad itself. And a record. Uh, go up like that right or let me let me redo it because I wanted to only move it in the y direction so uh, here we go two seconds record go up record right and this should be the motion that I have for the y there we go. So now all three motions that I wanted, all the tracks are created, all the animation tracks. And now I can arrange them in a sequence and tell them, tell Katia which one to put first, which one middle, which one last, right? So here I click on the sequence and it says, okay, which one of these tracks you want to uh, cre uh, put in the sequence and in what order? And I just do it the same uh, order that I did. So put this one first, the next one second, the last one third. And I make a sequence using all of these three, and I OK that. So now I have this sequence. And now if I choose this sequence and click on the uh, simulation player, now I can play it. Right? This is what I want. So now I can simulate it in what? In uh, Katia. But if I want to create an animation video that I can play outside Katia, let's say with Windows Media Player, I need to take this from here and take it to um, infrastructure and then go to real-time rendering. And here you have this command here, generate video, that you can create an animation out of it. And before I do create an animation, I would like to hide these lines, right? So they don't show in my animation. So I hide them. And uh, maybe even I can hide my shuttles too, right? So this is what I really want to happen. Now I click on generate a video and it says you want video out of what? And you choose your sequence that you just generated. You go and give it a name here. So I click on file name and give it any name. Let's say video one. Here I move this out of the way so you can see it. And then say, OK, go ahead and create an animation for me. There we go. So now this is going to be a video file that you can play in most of the video players. Look, it's here. I played the media player. Good. So you have complete control over direction of motion, amount of motion, speed of motion, the sequence, and everything if you use the uh, workbenches that I just mentioned, which were, again, um, it was under digital mockup fitting. You do all the sequence, shuttle, track, everything, and then you go to infrastructure to real-time rendering and then convert your sequence into a video. So hopefully it was useful to you and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.